This is Let's Talk Showbiz and I'm Dorina Avio. And of course, we're starting with hashtag fix the country. Now, uh, it's become something that day in, day out, you hear a lot of Ghanaians talking about it. And with all the dooms coming in, maybe one or two things, it's like when you meet celebrities, when you meet personalities, then uh, they just want to tell you what they feel is appropriate or what can be done for the country. And one of those people or such people... A stone boy and Nashoko. So Nashoko believes that the health system needs to be fixed. And well, she has a story to that. And Stone Boy, who is a dance or artist, also says that it is not just one person, but we all need to get involved. Let's hear from Nashoko and Stone Boy on hashtag fix the country. I expected you to ask me this anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not like you, want to, you have to or you want to take me to where I don't expect to. We are all involved. We are all Ghanaians. Yeah. I think I have tweeted a thing about it before. You know, and my brother, we are all involved. What I said was that we are all involved. We are all being affected. And we surely need fixing. Exactly. So one day at a time, we, are, we, shall, we shall be fixed. Small, small, yeah, we will Because reach there. there is a will for every, all of us are willing to fix things from the people in government exactly you can hear some of them come out and say yes indeed the financial minister has come up yes indeed so that means that there's truly something that we need to be doing in the end we don't ever finish fixing the mm -hmm. developed countries are always every day also fixing, fixing things. things how much more us we that think that we don't need fixing we do need fixing the Definitely. country really does you know Maybe so. when you talk about the country you know that the country is not just a ge geographical location the country is there it's in um, it is is in co it, the country is a co collection of everything everything the people the, people, the government so the, the uh, workers every, fixing, then you can imagine every part of it you know, every, every part, part of it, it does need. well I, i'm not very well informed about the fix the country campaign but i have seen um some part of it i think regarding the Kolebu teaching hospital um a mother lost her child, a 13-year-old boy, and she did say that it was because the system failed her. Um, the doctors did the very best they could, but the system failed her. So if I'll add my voice to the campaign at all, I would say that the health sector needs a lot of fixing. I have seen firsthand the struggles that mothers have to go through, seeing their children get accurate, good medical care from a facility like the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, which is our number one referral hospital. Um, so what I'll say is, hey, if things aren't working well for us so far, the very best way that we can individually, let us garner support and direct all the support we can get towards fixing our health sector, especially facilities like the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. How about our movie sector? Does it need any fixing at all? Well, we are a growing industry. So I wouldn't say fixing, I would say we need to continue to grow and develop. So, um, and a lot has to do with talent management, talent, and putting in good work. And I believe the more we churn out good products, we'll begin to attract the right investment. So Right, so that was Nashoko and Stone Boy talking about hashtag fix the country. Now let's move straight to the CEO of OM Studios, who happens to be Abraham Ohine Jan. Now, he's been talking about the movie industry and, well, movies in general. But, of course, one will ask, considering what he's been doing over the years, why he hasn't actually shot a feature film. Well, he explains more on this to my colleague Ibrahim Ben Bako. Many, many reasons. Our film industry here in Ghana isn't that fully developed. I'm in a process. I have shot one film, but it was just an experiment and we put it out on YouTube. People can check it out, Dreams and Hip Hop. Um, but um, I haven't, my career isn't, hasn't ended yet. That was like one phase of my life. And there's a lot of other things that I've done uh, away from you know, the music videos in terms of engineering and technical stuff with the TV stations and things like that. Plus, lots of documentaries and commercials. The hope now is after uh, this time period, I will move more towards that side more towards the film side okay, and, oh, and so obviously with a little bit more maturity um, a bit more insight and a bit more knowledge I'm hoping that whatever we are able to produce now
can actually make its way onto the world stage rather than just in Ghana. But how do you see the film industry here? It's in its infancy in terms of stepping onto the global stage. There's a process to filmmaking. Um, and most of that process, um, we have kind of leapfrogged to just filming stuff and editing them. But in terms of the process that gets a film onto... <laughs> <laughs> Kwame, he's, he's not correct. <laughs> this is my son. <laughs> um, in terms of the process that gets a film onto the global stage, there is st a stage-by-stage -stage process. And a lot of that is missing in this country. And until we fix that, it's going to be very difficult. You can put a million dollars into a film here in Ghana, made by Ghanaians, and it will not see the light of day anyway. But you can spend $100,000, if you follow the right process, you will see the film with international distribution. So if you don't follow the process properly, it will not go anywhere. You what can, are these processes? It's a long process. It's everything from developing the scripts, who's involved, who's acting in it, how it is done, um, um, clearing all the rights, chain of title, so many things. It's a long process, but it's something that we're hoping to with the foundation that I'm setting up, which is to train young people to make short films. And in, in the process of making these short films, um, we're hoping to teach them how they can get their film onto the international stage. You heard from the CEO of OM Studios, that's Abraham Ohenijan. Now let's go straight to the church. Urban gospel musician John Winner says that the church is losing talent to the world and he actually has his reasons. You know, unlike, um, you know, when you come to the music industry, there are structures, there are other things that can actually support one musician or a talent to greater heights. He said that unlike the church, it's like uh, there's no means of supporting these talents. So when they start, then it's like it gets to that point, they move to the world. Let's hear from John Winner. Yes, in a way because if there is educational funding for the church, why, is it not, why, why don't we have talent funding? Because the church have lost all her heroes and all her heroines to the world. Come to think of it now, go back and check history. All the big names we mentioned today in music were all from the church. What happened? The church refused to create a space, a platform for all these people. Not necessarily singing and music, choreography, um, um, spoken word, everything. There's a lot of talent in the church that the church needs to grab it. Nobody wants, uh, nobody wants an already made product. Okay, so if the church would take this from the very scratch, they own, excuse me, quote and unquote, they own them. You know, because when, you, when somebody's already made and he comes somewhere, he has a tendency of living because you didn't, you didn't make him. All right, but without, without, without uh, an iota of doubt, I want to say that some other men of God are doing like the, the, the likes of Pastor Chris Oyakilum is doing marvelously well, putting people on a whole record label from a church putting artists on, so many signed artists who are doing marvelously well. Kudos to him and whoever has the mindset of doing the same. But what I want to say is that the church needs to build our talent. There's a lot that we need to do than just looking, watching that same praise and worship leader come to minister for 14 years, minister for 15 years in the church. If somebody has talent in the church and he has a proper plan, a business plan for it, why don't the church push him? Do what you need is to present the plan. Okay, this is my promotional plan. This is the projectional plan. This is the proposal. This, this, that. There's a whole team in the church that needs to be formed that will be like, we'll take care of this to help these people, to become better people. In my, in my quest of doing this, I've gone through a lot. I can share. I don't want to go into church, church stuff because the church will start bashing me, but you know, that's okay. We've, we've, we've seen it all. Uh, but uh, the little I can say is that the time is now for the church to discover her own. There are diamonds hidden in dust in the church. There are people that the church needs to hold and pick them up and blow them. There's no time for us now. All right, gone, gone were the days uh, our parents were thinking music was for people who were true ones, football was for people who were true ones and all that. But now here we are. I'm not talking about the money factor, but yes, the money factor, because everything we do has to do with money. Now footballers are making millions of pounds, millions of dollars everywhere. Music is equally making such money. The last time I heard of, uh, just latter part of last year, I heard of a secular artist, I wouldn't mention his name, who signed a deal with UBA. That was $3.5 million. That was huge. 
I don't want to mention his name, but that was very huge. $3.5 million was like top notch. That's big money, all right? And the church can equally groom people who can take that money and raise other people. Because for me, my small record label, I have already three people that I'm looking at signing on. Already we've not done official stuff, but we are looking at signing on. There are a lot of packages that we have in the pipeline that we want to do. So uh, I'll urge the church, when I mean the church, I mean the body of Christ, I mean the church of God universally. No denominations attached. I'm talking about general aspects. So the church, we have the funds. The church has the funds. We should help the people. We should help the younger people. They need it. They need it. I have been, I had to struggle. How I came out, I shot my first video by taking my rent. I rented a house two years and I went, I went back and took, I stayed in it for a year and I went back for my money to shoot the video because I had passion for what I was doing. So I had to run and go and take back. How I, how I survived that one year, nobody knows about it. But this is what the church needs to do. The big men in the church, the big women, please support talent, support younger people. When you see somebody who has it, push that person and we all get up there. Right, so that's John Winner, and we're hoping maybe the church hears this, they will do something about it. Or maybe somebody has a different opinion on that as well. My name is Doreen Avia. Very big thank you to you, Jata. I can, of course, IBM Beverly on production. I'm back here, same time here on the John News Channel. But remember to go on myjohnline.com, the entertainment page, for more of our stories. And also remember to go on social media, Joy Entertainment, to get all the updates in your world of entertainment. Until then, have a great evening.